Hello Fun Army and welcome back to Life and Other Circus Girls. Today uh, we are back on our sewing journey um, and I'm trying to take the next step in that journey even though I'm not really sure what the next step is. I've been trying to figure it out. Um, I guess there's sort of two sides that are happening simultaneously. As you know, I want to be uh, growing my cosplay expertise uh, but at the same time I feel in order to do that I need to understand basic garment construction and stuff like that. So obviously I've made attempts uh, at making t-shirts but you know in a very simplified two-piece way. Uh, we've attempted some leggings which went fairly well but probably needs a bit of improvement. Um, and I was a bit like, well, I just really need to keep advancing my top and bottom skills, <laughs> as far as I can tell right now. Um, I did have a, a re-dive into the cosplay book that Jay and Laurie bought me. Um, I've been diving into some books about just generally understanding how to put garments together. So I've sort of come up with a bit of an amalgamation of things, classically. So I thought from sort of where I was looking into the cosplay stuff, one thing that might be quite useful, so I'm told, um, is to sort of understand the basic approach to putting together an outfit that fits. Um, and the way that a lot of cosplayers do this um, is by sort of having a, a base pattern that they use and adapt for a lot of different things that they make. Um, and what, one of the things that everybody seems to use, or certainly the, the people that I'd looked at, um, was using princess seams to um, create that sort of base shape that fits to your own particular body and then you can build on top of that with the other various layers of things that you need to do. So I was like, okay, mission one is princess seams. Now, because I'm still learning and I'm not quite... I can't yet find myself in a position where I've got a whole cosplay ready to go. Um, I wanted to make something that was advancing my cosplay skills, but also I could wear just day to day. So I was like, okay, I need something a bit cosplay, but that's day to day. So I don't know where it came from, but I was inspired by Snow White because I have very pale skin and very dark and then my battery died, so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, somehow I'd sort of come back to Snow White. Maybe it's because I'm also preparing for my Disney trip later this year. Um, so what I thought was, oh, Snow White, conveniently a princess. Let's do some princess scenes for Snow White. Um, so I thought, actually, if I made a top or like a t-shirt, but sort of incorporating some of those elements of Snow White. So like inspired by Snow White. Um, so I bought up some material, uh, some t-shirting material in the blue. And I also bought some of the red. So obviously she has the red on her poofy sleeves. Now, I don't want to do poofy sleeves because <laughs> that might be too far. Like at this point, I haven't even done a, a garment where I have to physically attach the sleeves. Um, if you've watched my Sorcerer's Apprentice <laughs> attempts at making that outfit, I sort of attempted to attach sleeves, but I was doing it completely all wrong because I was doing kimono sleeves and not sleeve sleeves and I literally was just trying to sew two pieces of fabric together in a chub. I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really look anything up or, you know, look into the theory, so it was fine for what it was, but yeah, for this, uh, uh yeah. I need to attempt sleeves, but certainly not at the poofy level. Um, and interestingly, one of my friends said, oh, why don't you try tulip sleeves? So they're still sort of incorporating something a little bit more designed, shall we say, um, uh, rather than it just being like a normal t-shirt sleeve, um, but also potentially, <laughs> or hopefully, <laughs> not being as complicated as something like a poofy sleeve. Um, and that actually also made me think, well, that would be a good place to incorporate the red. So if you have like the back bit of the tulip being the blue, so that's the bit that sort of sits over the top, but then I could have like the one that sits on the front and goes underneath being red. So that's where your sort of elements of red on Snow White's top come through in this design. Um, I won't show you my drawings because I don't think I've really mastered design drawing yet. But the theory is to just do 
uh, sort of what I would consider to be the staple of princess seams, which is two seams down the front, which gives you a centre section and then two side sections. So it ultimately takes something that uh, is based on a t-shirt pattern. So partly my t-shirt pattern that I used for the two-piece t-shirts uh, and partly an actual <laughs> t-shirt pattern. I'm sort of taking the guidance on the sleeve from the actual t-shirt pattern. Uh, combining those two things together, drawing my own princess theme. So this could entirely go wrong and I've been procrastinating on it a lot, like watching a lot of videos and reading some blogs to just try and understand the the purpose of the seam and, and, and why you would choose certain positioning. But ultimately, it's, it's, it's a little bit a design decision. Um, and certainly until I get to a point where I understand how and why certain shapes fit me, <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, it's going to be a little bit hit or miss. So yeah, I, I, I really don't know how this is going to go. Um, yeah, so <laughs> spent a lot of time thinking about the pattern and how it needs to look. But ultimately what we're aiming for is it's a t-shirt slash top made out of t-shirt material. It's mostly in that blue. We're going to have a round neckline. I keep debating about whether I should do sort of a little white collar because obviously she has a stand up white collar. I definitely don't want to do that. And I had pondered maybe doing like a little Peter Pan collar and I did get some white sort of cuffing that you would use to just do like a normal t-shirt collar. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Again, I think that might be one step too far. I think maybe we'll, we'll see how it looks once I've put the main bits together and if I feel it needs a something else, that might be something to look at. Um, but yeah, so the overall shape is going to be, as I say, based on sort of a t-shirt pattern and my t-shirt pattern and my t-shirt pattern sort of comes in and flares out a little bit at the bottom anyway so realistically I basically think it's just going to be a slightly more fitted version of that with attached tulip sleeves so it'll sort of have round neckline you'll have the center piece and then the two side pieces the back piece is just going to be one single piece then we'll do the tulip sleeves which have then the blue and the red um and it'll, yeah, sort of hopefully <laughs> flare out a little bit at the bottom, which sort of just gives you that more princessy overall shape. Um, I did also buy some yellow cuffing because I had pondered whether it might be nice to sort of incorporate the colouring from her skirt on the bottom of the top. Uh, but I think, you know, we've already got the blue and the red. There's the potential to add the white. And I'm like, what I don't really want is like, as much as I love multicoloured things, I don't want it to look too clowny. Um, I really just want to focus on trying to advance some of the uh, the techniques that I'm building here. So, and you know, one thing at a time, this has already like broken my brain more than anything else has yet broken my brain. <laughs> the sewing journey. The next mish is uh, just double checking that this pattern is going to work and then cutting out the fabric and then trying to pin stuff together or figure out the figure out the order um i know i'm not supposed to touch the sleeves until the main body is done and as you know there's going to be that hilarious moment where i try not to sew up the armholes <laughs> or the bottom like <laughs> when you're trying to like concentrate on a lot of once and learn you think that's very hard it's very hard. Anyway, we shall see how it goes. But uh, yeah, let's let's stop procrastinating and let's crack on with uh, cutting out the fabric. Step one, or well, step two, really. But you know, next step. So I have painstakingly, painstakingly <laughs> um, finished all of the edges of the pieces for the, the main body. So the three front pieces and the back piece. Um, the main reason for that, as you may remember from before, is to stop everything fraying whilst we're sewing. Um, and you have to finish your edges at some point. 
Uh, and even though I might need to make some adjustments to the sizing, I would rather do it at the front end. <laughs> just because I'm a little bit inexperienced and that just kind of helps keep everything where it needs to be. So, next step will be to then pin up uh, the three front pieces. So, I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna do one bit to one bit at a time, otherwise it's gonna get very confusing. Um, but yeah, so it'll be right sides together, and then we pin, and then we sew up and down that line, and then right sides together for the other side, and then we sew up and down that line, and then we should have the one front piece. And at that point, I then need to pin it to the back piece and sew round, but without sewing up the neck hole, the bottom or the armholes. <laughs> oh God, must focus and everything will be fine. Okay, here we go. Uh, I I'm gonna have to go really slow because there's basically a whole process of manipulation to get the seams to, to meet properly. Uh, but the rule is apparently as long as you can as long as it stays flat at the areas where you pin it then you know that it will sew flat but yeah because obviously it's a very stretchy material and it's all on a curve which means you've got a whole like as you're turning around sometimes you're on the straight grain sometimes you're on the bias um so yeah just to avoid going like super wrong best to go a bit slowly and take my time i think so here we go wish me luck Alright, so, moment of truth, did I do okay? Oh, oh, oh! oh my god, well that end matches up, that's good, and there's no puckering, <laughs> which frankly is a fucking miracle. Um, thank you to the amazing lady on YouTube who taught me how to do the pinning so that that would be okay. Uh, yes, 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 oh, um, I've left finger marks all over the fabric. I made a roast earlier, um, so that it might be greasy finger marks. It might need a wash before I can wear it. Yes. And that is <laughs> slightly wonks just because of I've not quite caught the edge. But when we fix that, when we actually do the other bits, that's then going to form part of the um, armpit and neckline. Feeling pretty good about that. Excellent. Now I've got to do the other side and hope that they match. <laughs> that was a bit of a psycho laugh. <laughs> okay, that's good. Step one, complete. Alrighty, so I've now sewed on, oh, let's just turn that off. I've now sewed on the other side. How does this one look? <gasps> Got two tiny puckers, but can we can we stretch those out? Stretch those out. Oh, honestly, they're so tiny. This is the joy of stretchy fabric is that apparently you can still manipulate it uh, once you've sewn it. Let's give it a little. Yeah, everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Um. Again, I've sort of slightly not quite caught the armhole in the exact place, but that will get fixed when we're actually sewing the sleeves in. So, you're going to see this before I do. Does it look even? Uh, obviously, it's still rolling round, so it's actually... <laughs> Let's lay it, lay it down and then I can have a look. Okay. I think it looks even. I suppose we'll find out when uh, when I pin it to the back, but it's making a nice kind of circle at the bottom. Oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. <laughs> I think this is the thing, like, obviously the big test is going to be, does it actually fit? <laughs> uh, do I need to make any adjustments, etc. But I think in terms of the technique, um, this was the bit I was quite well... One of the bits I was quite worried about, we still have to tackle the sleeves, but um, yeah, because I obviously made the pattern myself, I didn't really do any exact measurements, I just kind of winged it based on combining a few things together, so I had no idea if this was going to work. So I like the, that base technique of doing that, 
of learning how to um, manipulate to get the pinning right, to then get the sewing right. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see how it looks when it's on and how that sits. Um, and I think, yeah, as I say, you know, I've made lovely little fingerprints all over, <laughs> all over the fabric. So, uh, yeah, it might need a, a wash before we wear it. But so far, not so bad at all. Next step then, uh, attaching the back, remembering not to sew up the armholes or the neck hole or the bottom. So I've only got to sew up the two sides. I can do this. <gasps> so, uh, oh, do you know what? <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this, but let's actually just move the old uh, table out of the way. Cause, a <laughs> hang on, we'll go for a kneel. <laughs> old lady said, oh, this is more of a, like an awkward squat. <laughs> you can sort of see that, yeah, the seam lines, she says, can you see? Can you see? The seam lines are going down from the shoulder, across the bust, and down and out. So the <laughs> it'll be better when I can do the, <laughs> the final thing. But uh, yeah, hopefully you can see a bit that actually it does look like the seam lines are landing in the right place. So yay, yay. <laughs> Just remembered that I need to press down the seams before I pin front to back. Um, there seems to be a mixed argument about whether you press them open or you press them to one side. I think I'm gonna press them to one side because they're a wee bit bulky. Perhaps this would also be a moment where you trim them down, but um, because I've got stretchy fabric, I maybe don't need to do that. Uh, we'll see how it feels when it goes on. If they're irritating, then I will trim them down. Alrighty, so we have sewn front to back. Let's um, turn it the right way out, see how it makes us feel. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. I might go and do a little um, quick try on to see how it's landing in case I want to make any adjustments because the next stop I think then will be sleeves yeah we've got a number of things to do for the sleeves so I'll explain that as we do it because we've gone for the tulip sleeves obviously um so yeah try on see if we need adjustments then sleeves and then it'll be the hemming and we're done it, I make it sound like this is oh there's just these few steps to do it takes forever <laughs> Let's go do the try on for now and see where we're at. Okay, I'm trying to stand under the light so you can see this a bit better, but this actually, I'm, I'm, I'm so dead surprised, this actually fits really nicely. So yeah, hopefully you can see a bit better this time that I, got, I can't see it myself now. Uh, the, then the uh, seam lines come down here just across the bust and then in towards the waist and then out towards the bum. Uh, so, Hilariously, I could probably just wear it like this without the other sleeves, but obviously uh, I've got the finished edges on the outside. Nobody wants that because they're white right now, lol. Um, so yeah, I feel, I, I, I'm, I'm going to feel suitably smug as long as we don't fuck up the sleeves. This is great. <laughs> ha ha, I probably just jinxed myself with that one right there. But yeah, feeling, feeling very happy about that. That's gone really nicely. Okay, so with that big win, we're now on to tricky part number two, which is creating tulip sleeves and then sewing in the sleeves. So two, two new techniques in one. Um, the blue bits, if I get this the right way around, I'm so going to do this wrong, right, hang on. The idea is, that the, yeah, that way. Yeah, hang on, right. <laughs> I'm so prepared for this moment. Uh, 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 yes, okay, so. Oh my god, pick them all up at once. Fabric likes to stick to other fabric, it turns out. So, the idea is that 
it's, I don't know, can you see this? Okay, it sort of sits on the shoulder like that. So you've got the blue part of the blue petal on the back side and the red petal just underneath that on the front side. And that's sort of what brings in both the, not quite a poofy sleeve, but a more um, feminine sleeve, shall we say. And uh, then also the, the red of her sleeves where she has that interspersed. Um, and I've also got red on the underneath of the blue flap. I've got to say mainly because I ran out of blue fabric. <laughs> But I quite like it as a little stylus item, so you won't necessarily see it unless this flaps up a bit, but it's there, it's a nice little secret design thing. Feature! That's the word I was looking for. Feature. Design feature. Um, so, because it's sleeves and I probably need to pay attention, um, <laughs> I will do the main bits and bobs of that, I think, tomorrow. Um, but what I wanted to tackle today was actually just sewing these bits of fabric together um, because ultimately what we're going to do is sew them together, turn them uh, right way out and that's then how they will be attached to the main garment. Um, so yeah, uh, I had already pinned these, I think I filmed it, <laughs> sod if I didn't. Um, yeah, I've already pinned these so that they are uh, double checking, she says here, right sides together so I just need to sew around the outside. Um, I'm basically going to sew, um, <laughs> sorry, looks like some sort of internal organ in shape really, <laughs> but I'm basically going to sew around the main bulk and then I'll leave this um, short end open to turn it round and then I'll top stitch that because what, from what I can tell from the sleeve construction, um, you basically will have this bit over this bit and then you sew these bits together and that's the bit that goes underneath your arm so um, it's fine that that's going to be top stitched because when you then sew those two together the top stitching will be on the inside I think if my if my brain physics got that right but maybe I'll do that bit tomorrow as well just in case, <laughs> just in case I didn't I mean it's not a huge issue if you can see if you can see the top stitching because it'll be under your arm anyway. So, um, yeah, that is the plan. That's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. So let's turn the kidney kidney, or like a lung. <laughs> turn it right way out. Because the only thing I was worried about is that actually you'd end up seeing the red um, if it was a bit uneven and maybe that's down to how I iron it or something. <laughs> I'm not very good at understanding these bits of physics so yeah. Oh, maybe I should have pressed these seams because it's a bit lumpy. I mean I was going to iron it anyway. Yeah because look, yeah you can already sort of see that poking out underneath. I mean it's not going to be a huge issue because you're going to have the red um, tulip leaf there anyway but we'll see how it looks. Um, I don't know, like it's such stretchy fabric it's really hard to tell if actually pressing the seams does much other than bed them in. I don't think it really flattens them down much. So. Um, Oh, oh, look, there's a little pokey bit. Yeah, maybe actually it's better to iron it this way and just see what happens. It's like a little stocking as well. A little stocking. Maybe we need to get in here a bit more with, there you go, with, the, with the finger or maybe your scissors or whatever. Poking tool, <laughs> whatever poking tool you prefer. So profesh. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could have done these not lined but I'm so inexperienced with sleeves, I didn't really fancy my chances of the other finishing options um, that I thought this would be the easiest one, which I still think it will be. Um, but we'll see how it ends up looking, and if I don't like it, I will figure something else out. <laughs> I will, you know, fiddle with something and make it work. Um, the thing the upside is, like, the stretchy fabric is uh, in some ways difficult to work with, but actually, 
when stuff hasn't gone quite as you want it's it's easy enough to manipulate it in some way to make it work so uh, yeah okay well iron that in a bit then but I'm gonna crack on with the others in the meantime okay so um, I had to make some adjustments before I could move on naturally uh, it suddenly occurred to me that I should probably actually <laughs> unpick the the top of each of the shoulders because um, it's already quite bulky and obviously all of that part's going to be underneath the shoulder seam um, and we may need to like chop into some of that anyway to sort of loosen it and make sure there's enough room for manoeuvre shall we say so that was annoying <laughs> but I've done that now um, so what we need to do next um, is what is apparently known as sewing in some ease. Uh, so this essentially means, if I hold this up, I basically need to sew around here and you can basically, you can do that with like sort of a, a tacking stitch or I'm going to attempt it on the sewing machine with a long, a long stitch length. Um, and you basically sew two rows within what will be your seam allowance. And then at the back end of this, once you've done a few other things, uh, you're effectively like pulling on those pieces of thread to, um, I thought to ruffle the shoulder, it's not really, it's probably, probably a, uh, a formal term for this, but yeah, you're basically sort of finding a way to um, evenly spread the material so it'll fit into your armhole um, and land where you want it to land, basically. So. This is probably the trickiest bit of this. I, I do obviously have the pain that is having two parts as well instead of one shoulder part. But I've pinned all of that together for now just so that it doesn't flop about. I'm not planning to sew that together unless it's irritating me when I try it on. Because um, I think otherwise it will be too restrictive and slightly defeat the point of having a tulip. Um, so yeah, for the minute that's just pinned down. But yeah, we do the ease, and once we've done that, we're going to sew these bits together, the, un the underarm bit. Uh, and then we attach the sleeve to the garment, and that scares me. So, <laughs> one thing at a time. Here we go, ease. So now we are right sides together. It's very hard to tell, obviously, because it all looks red right now, but it's blue and red on the inside, which is the outside. Uh, and we're literally just going to sew this bit here together, and that is the underarm seam. Right, this is so tense. <laughs> I'm about to try the first sleeve. It's all pinned in, but... The big thing you have to make sure of when you're going round is that you don't get puckers caught. And I've got like four, it's, well, in some areas I think now five layers of fabric. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this, I don't. I'm just going to have to go very, 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 very slowly. So, I've pulled out the easing and snipped the edges and how do we get back the right way? Hang on, hang on. This is genuinely the most exciting thing I've ever done because I had no puckers and I've got a sleeve! I've got an actual sleeve! Look at that! Oh. Um, the hilarious bit is that the sleeves then need to match on both sides, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm definitely going to need to uh, thin down some of the seams on the inside because there's a hefty weight here right now. But we'll see what it looks like when I try it on once I've got both sleeves on because maybe that helps with sort of the poofy effect that I'm not really going for but might be nice for the snow whitiness of it all. We shall see. Okay, we have two whole sleeves. <laughs> They are insanely heavy though, insanely heavy. Um, 
Now, it's not a perfect, perfect batch from what I can see, like a slightly, which side was it? Actually, it's not as bad now I'm looking at it, but I'm like, I slightly missed the lineup of the um, seam. <laughs> the seam, that thing that goes down the side, the seam, um, with the underarm seam, but actually it's not, it's only a little bit offset, that's okay. Um, I haven't had to unpick anything, which is the massive win. Um, so I'm gonna go and do a little try on just see how it sits because as I say there's like there's a lot of semic bulk on the inside of here which is understandable because at certain points there are five whole bits of fabric there um, but it might be one of those things where I keep it if it adds to sort of the structure if it doesn't I'll be trimming like a mofo <laughs> any minute now uh, obviously trying not to cut through my seams because I will cry if that happens after all of this hard work and then all we need to do is hem the neckline and the bottom and then we are done unless I decide to add anything else <laughs> but even just looking at it like I th I thought the red would feel quite subtle and it does not um but I haven't tried it on yet so I yeah I'm gonna do a little try on and, and see because I did and I can't remember if I mentioned this actually I did have a ponderance about maybe doing a, a white Peter Pan collar. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure if I have the energy and I did kind of think it would be too much but uh, yeah we'll see we'll we'll see how I feel once I've tried it on I do want to kind of get like we've we've explored a lot of new things with this top and I don't want to overdo it so uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna see uh, but yeah final bits now and then we'll have the reveal Okay, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> I probably should have tried it on once I pinned the sleeves on because it turned out that I pulled out all the threads and chopped all the ends and gone to do the final try on <laughs> uh, and the shoulders weren't the right length I'd actually made them a bit longer, which was obviously a good thing um, initially, but not when you don't go back and check and then you perfectly slow, slow, perfectly sew the sleeves on. So I had to unpick the sleeves that I had perfectly sewn on and then shorten the shoulders and then redo the sleeves, um, which also meant I had to redo the easing stitch uh, which I did by hand this time which frankly was actually 10 times easier in terms of pulling it so I'll be doing that again next time um, and in fairness I've now sewn the sleeves back on and aligned the seams up better this time so it did work out for the best but it was painful and I was very upset for <laughs> Until I reminded myself that that's the point of going through the learning process is so that I can learn how to do stuff properly um, and remember things that I probably should have figured out. Uh, so we are now back. We're now back where we were. I'm about to pull out the threads again and hope that nothing goes wrong. Um, then I will be finishing the um, bottom hem and the neckline and we should then be good to go. So, here we go. Nah. Next step, final try on. I should have um, figured out or looked up some Snow White phrases. I, I can't think of any. <laughs> but anyway, look. I don't know if you can really get the full effect when I'm sat down. It definitely involves a good, like, arm flouncing. But <laughs> I'll film some arm flouncing for you. And I think actually is my ribbon blending into the blind. <laughs> 
Oh, I haven't had to put a ribbon on in a very long time. So forgive me, I could do that better. Um, wow. <laughs> this has been a lengthy and intense project. Um, but I'm feeling good, to be honest. Like, the princess seams went remarkably well. Um, just a few quick, let me say this correctly, cutting and shunting. <laughs> of um, various techniques and patterns that I already had down. Um, the sleeves were a whole new challenge entirely, especially because I decided to do the tulip sleeves and didn't realize how um, extra complicated that was gonna be. So really it has actually taken me kind of a good few days to get to grips with everything, but I've ended up with a t-shirt, the shape I wanted, with the sleeves I wanted. Um, and everything having worked out okay. I think I would like to uh, wash it because as, as I said earlier, I've got these random fingerprints on it. I don't know crap. <laughs> managed to do that. Um, and obviously just the picking and unpicking and pulling and stretching uh, has made it feel a little bit like <laughs> So uh, yes, yeah, just kind of be good to wash it and start again really. But yeah, I even felt and oh, it is rolling a little bit, but I did even feel that actually my technique for um, doing the hems and the uh, neckline, oh my God, why can't I never remember words? Um, was also a lot better this time. I think <sighs> learning to have a bit of patience and slow down occasionally is a good thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm managing to get things a bit neater. So yeah, overall feeling pretty good about this. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing next. I need to have a lie down for a few weeks before I think about it. Um, so I'll get back to some gaming in the interim, I expect. So yes, all in all, good project. Very happy with the outcome. Feel like I got something nicely inspired by Snow White and got to build on my skills. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know if you've got any thoughts or suggestions for what I should be doing next, or if there are any, no, <laughs> if there are any other Disney inspired things you think I should be looking at right now. Obviously I'm still in the run up to Disney at the moment, so I'm in the zone. So definitely uh, interested to hear your thoughts on that. Um, otherwise I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, bye.